Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Admiral Pegasus on the Pegasus Show. And on today's show, yes, it's patch 63, so we'll be going through the patch notes. And for those of you who was awake, what, nearly seven and a half, hour, half hours ago, you would have known that we're going to be getting a brand spanking new specialty ship this month, Enterprise. And also Jonathan Archer and a new pick officer in the form of Hugh. And also there's a couple of uh, little things as well. We will be touching on that after we've gone through these uh, patch notes. So ch keep, uh, keep watching to check out the Enterprise section as we go through the patch notes and see what they say about that. But um, I've already had a look at this briefly since recording started a bit late. And thanks to Rebecca for dropping these, uh, doing up these patch notes. We'll see what she's actually going to be telling us this month. So... We're still going to have Discovery as the uh, picture here. I don't understand why. It's the Enterprise Act. Surely, advertising the Enterprise, they would put the NX class Starship. But, alas, no, they don't. So, but anyway, so the, the Temple Cord War rages on. And, uh, sorry, I've had to be pushing my missus in a wheel, manual wheelchair today. Uh, forces turn their backs on those who would have called them allies, betraying a trust built over centuries. Zindi have launched a ferocious campaign against the Federation and all who dared to oppose them. However, the Sphere Builders are not the only ones capable of meddling with timelines in order to achieve their goals. Utilising their temple um, cartography abilities, Maya and the Commander have enlisted the aid of Captain Archer and the crew of NX-01 in the fight against the Zindi and the Sphere Builders. Now, if you remember the end of the core missions last month, Trip was injured because he had been kidnapped by the Zindi. He was injured and he's lying currently in your base's infirmary. That's a lot of Trip Tuckers. Uh, a hell of a lot of Trip Tuckers. But anyway, so here we go. Enterprise Part 2. And we're going to be getting the new ship. I'll let, let's move myself over a bit while we actually go through this section. Probably need to be a more here, don't I? Xbox Faction stores a new expansion to the holodeck. Yay! And from what I've seen as well, more currencies. Yes, more currencies. Um, new officers, missions, cosmetics, bypass, and more. So basically the same jargon as usual. So NX01 and the favours. So here's the Enterprise coming in. The first of the NX class fleet. Um, it's available from Ops 40. Brings with it an improved efficiency for the Borg favour. Uh, Xbox Fraction Expansion. Upgrading NX01 will unlock uh, rewards such as the new Picard Hue and new Xbox favors. NX01 will be significantly improved the sourcing of Xbox credits used in the existing faction bundles and favors. So to me that basically means that they are going to receive an increase. Now I have heard that Enterprise is a free to play sourcing this month. How that's going to work we do not know but there is something I will throw in towards the end of the video, when we go on the Enterprise patch notes. So, um, NX-01 has its own refinery as well, which will include shards for um, Picard Q, and the NX refit, which is also going to be free to play sourcing from the start. Again, don't know how that's gonna be done, but we'll shall see. So anyway, moving myself back over a little bit. Here's the loop, so basically, um, I will do a full video on this one. Um, hopefully this evening because I've, we, I'm out of breath right now. I'm struggling really bad with a viral chest infection. So pushing my missus up a hill is not the one thing I really wanted to do this morning. Um, use um, the travel tokens because you're going to need some new travel tokens. There are going to be some new systems. Uh, I think they said there's about 15 new systems which are going to contain the um, aquatics. There's going to be two classifications of the aquatics, an interceptor and a battleship. The interceptor is going to be the easiest because as per usual with this game, the Enterprise is an explorer. But if you really, really want to go against the triangle, you could take the Enterprise up against the aquatics, which is going to give you an increased amount of loot. Um, oh, hello. I don't want to do that just yet. Um, so you use a new token to go face the Zindi aquatics. Uh, battle the Zindi aquatics hostiles if you dare. Uh, oh, the Risky Zindi. The kind that Risky. Um, bring extra challenge and drop substantial bonus. Uh, exchange Zindi Tech modules. 
in the NX01 refinery to earn opportunity chips. See what I mean? More currencies. More and more bloody currencies. They keep going on about bandwidth, bandwidth, yet they drop more and more currencies. Take some of the older ones and rehash them. Rename them. Um, use the opportunity ships to buy risky or safe uh, reward path, granting var various amounts of export crashing credits. Ooh. <sighs> Spend these on the new favours. Exchange the scraps in the Delphic Expanse travel for the travel tokens and do it all over again. So basically, you're starting here and then following the whole loop round. <sighs> yeah. Just make you breathless, just like pushing a woman up a hill in a wheelchair. Um, NX01 has an active ability as well, which reveals a deep space system. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. Um, is there anything else in here? Um, da, 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 da. No, I know I said I'd, I've been through this. Oh yeah, NX Isolinear Arrays. I'm guessing that's going to be something to use to upgrade Enterprise. But as well, here you go, Bex dropped a video, so obviously do check that out as well. So for a more in-depth look on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Um, in addition, 40 plus players will be able to claim 10 blueprints utilising a promo code that will be added here at event reset. So there's going to be a promo code you're going to have to get. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be here on the web store. At event reset to gain yourself 10 blueprints. Woo! So that's the extra bit that was meant to be mentioned at the end of the video, but because it's there, we'll say it. So there are 15 new favors um, that are exclusive to the NX01 and offer brand new functionality as such as Lucky Crystal Autumn Gas Favors gives you a bonus amount of raw mined materials when docking. So basically, once you've gone and mined your ore, crystal and gas, as soon as you get it back to the base, this will be obviously for G4 players and higher. Um, as soon as you dock, you will have a bonus given to you for um, these materials. Ooh, a bonus. It's a Brucey bonus. For the, those in the UK who are old enough to understand what that is, you know exactly what I mean by a Brucey bonus. So the favours that they're bringing in is a co Combat Enhancers, Ferocity, Frost, Fleet Commander Materials, um, the Mining Bonus one, so you're going to have to get the favour if you actually want the bonus. Um, NX01, Warp Loot and Repairs, Export Credit Boost, Warp Speed, Ship Scrapping Speed, Voyager Samples, FKR Rep, um, kinetic and energy damage. Ooh. So, here's your holodeck expansion. Now, we all know that the holodeck is limited to one level. Not anymore. It's going up to level 30. So, starting at Ops 32. So, yeah, that's going to be pretty much most of the game now. Players can upgrade the holodeck to level 30. Uh, coming with it is a new free daily claim to upgrade uh, resource holo amplifiers, more, more currency, used to upgrade the holodeck. Six new buffs, including six new exclusive missions and more. The buffs coming will be FKR rep, piercing, pierce all for PVE and ship pass efficiency. So, yay! Just leave it at level one. What was the problem? Why do they have to go and do this? Um, but I mean, not only will these boss provide players with the ability to impress their faction of their choice, be a greater threat to hostiles, but players can also get officer shards for the Enterprise, E, Data, Troy, and Picard. For every five levels on the new holodeck section in the recruit store. So once you actually level it up through level 5, level 10, 15, 20, 25 and 30, you're going to be able to get some off the ability to go get some officer shards for the Enterprise E crew. Well, just the three officers specifically. Players will have the ability to snag these massive buffs and get two full rare officer unlocks and one half epic officer unlock. There you go. 
So you get a full unlock of Data and a full unlock of Troy and a half unlock of uh, Picard. Yeah, I, I've only just noticed I've managed to unlock Troy and I didn't even realise I'd done it. I'm guessing that was because of the Officer Flash Pass that we just had. So, yay! That's just basically going to mean that I could probably send Troy up to level uh, tier 2, Data closer to tier 3 and Picard halfway through tier 2, I think. Something like that, I don't know. But yeah. So, it brings a new way to interact with the holodeck and offers its own exclusive rewards. Yeah, limited time. Because once you've passed it, that's it. That's what I'm reading from here. So anyway, let's jump into the officers. Obviously, we know the two officers that we're going to get, but we're also going to be getting Rare Shran. Now, obviously, Jonathan Archer is going to be a captain's um, and uh, is a bridge officer full stop. So you can use him below deck for stats, but obviously you, you might find some use out of him. And, believe it or not, some use for um, Trip Tucker, which I haven't done a video on to do with his officer's ability. But what I can tell you about his officer's ability, as much as um, Lube was kind enough to come along and explain it during the live stream, when you actually put it into practice, yes, it does work. It does work. But ultimately, it's, yeah, it's absolutely no bearing. But anyway, Archer's coming and he's going to give you a better, better bonus against the Zindi Hostiles if you're willing to have him. So how he's going to be sourced, I do not know. I've not had time to watch um, DJ's um, video, but I'm sure some of you will uh, drop in there and check it out as well. So, Captain's Maneuver is the Delphic Saviour, increasing the amount of resources you get from the Zindi Hostiles by X percent. <coughs> now, this starts at 300% and will top out at 100% with full synergy. So, you're looking at a potential 500%. Now, let's bear in mind at the minute, the Max Loot Crew, if you are running that, which is Enterprise Picard, Enterprise Data with full synergy, uh, 5 of 11 on the side... And the Doctor Below Decks, you're not getting anywhere near 300% straight out. I'll tell you that. Picard is 60. Synergize with Data is 100. Puts 5 of 11 will vary depending on what tier is. Mine's now tier 4, so that's an extra 80%. So there's 180% there. Then I've got the Doctor at 15%. So that's 195% I'm gaining. Plus the bonus of the, um, of the Newton itself, when I use the Newton... And ultimately, that's still not getting me anywhere near 300%. So just, just Archer on his own is going to be a great, great boost for gaining those indie scraps. Now, as well, they have uh, give us a few crew loadouts that we may want to try. We will check them out in the Enterprise part of this video. So, but going with full synergy as well. So you've got Trip Tucker and maybe Shren. Or if you've got Topal and Tucker. So 500% max, um, max synergy. And yeah, I, I will take that all day long. That's pretty much me going in doing a couple of runs. Let, let's forget this whole idea of a five minute loop. Let's just forget it. Do a couple of runs. And I could probably do a two chest pull every single day using Archer. And yes, this month I have said if I have got the materials, I will be going Ops 49. So which means this month I should be able to source Jonathan Archer. If he's in a, an SLB or an SMS, depending on what they run this month. So his officer ability is Faith of the Heart. Uh, when taking damage from a hostile or another player, Archer increases critical damage... By X percent for two rounds. Now, remember Trip, he's increasing your critical, is decreasing the opponent's critical damage by 50% straight out. Actually starting at a measly 5%, to be honest, that is not really going to be worth anything. If you have got the crit floor, which is the next favour I'm going after, because I've just finally finished, this, literally this morning, um, Zindi Escalation, so which means now I'm on full 200% for the scraps. Getting that critical floor, yes, fine. Adding 
um, Archer to it as well. It's just going to give you that little bit of boost against the Zindi Hostiles. Where I can potentially see this being more effective is actually against the general Hostiles. But again, it depends when the crits proc. So having Hugh below deck is definitely going to be advantageous against standard Hostiles. Not against the Zindi. Do not use Hugh against Zindi unless you have that critical uh, damage flaw. <coughs> um, Ossie is going to top out at 50% when tier 5. Uh, note, this ability can stack. It does not trigger with a Madders or Assault. Weapons with multiple shots will only trigger this ability once. So, let's take the Zindi for example. Using them for example. Five kinetic weapons. So that means you're looking at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25% in round 1. Now I'm presuming it's going to work the exact same way that um, uh, Lube explained how trip, uh, trip works. So yeah, you've still got a 25% boost of so continuously improving through the, through the round. So, but again, it needs critical chance to proc that critical damage. So again, yeah. Now, could this be another good one to put on, on with um, the likes of Carol Freeman and Honor Guard Wharf against players? 50% critical damage boost? Maybe. But they tend not to go very many rounds, so. But it's, it's definitely worth a look. Next up is gonna be um, Shren, who's a below decker officer. Uh, run from no one, increasing your base warp speed by X percent. So, yeah. Okay, this is looking like a very meh officer, in all honesty. Increasing warp speed, okay. Really wouldn't put him on the bridge when I'm wanting to warp to an Amada or I'm going out hostile grinding. It's not something I would consider putting on the bridge. So... It'll be to me. It's like I'd rather it be like Miles O'Brien, blow deck, have that as a blow deck ability. But it's not. <clears throat> anyway, here's your crystal miner for then for this month. Yes, I did say we was going to get one or the other, didn't I? Yeah, crystal with the Andorian Mining Consortium. For those of you who remember where this was used, this was used in a uh, testing. Uh, was it testing ground or proving ground? Something like that. One of the two, where the Zindi were testing the weapon against the planet and Enterprise and the Andorian ship, the Kamari, had actually come through to actually help Enterprise and they were trying to get their hands on the weapon and obviously they used the Andorian Mining Consortium saying they were looking for Archonite. Very original. So, but yeah. So, take him as you will. Um, Pikachu then is going to be another below deck officer. Um... It, with his abilities is highly versatile against uh, across all warships, repairing a percentage of hull health when taking damage each round. Mining ability to com is completely unique, new and unique. Loot boosting your mining, making sure that you still have room in your cargo for his extra materials. So, plan for the future. Officer's ability, increasing the amount of ore, crystal or gas, the raw form, so when you're mining it, Collected while mining with any ship, any ship, so that includes your warships, more chance you're going to get blown up, but if you're using a warship on a node, on a mining node, by X percent without draining the node faster. So, basically, for every 100 pieces of ore we take, one... <laughs> Every 100 pieces of ore, you're going to get an extra 5. That's starting at tier 1. At tier 5, for every 100 pieces, you're going to get 25. So it'll be 105, and it'll keep going up like that. But the node will only lose 100. It will not gain that excess. So basically, he's replicating 5 pieces of ore and doubling it. In in essence, he's... he's yeah. So the, the node's not going to go down any faster, but your cargo will fill faster. If you get where I'm coming from. It's easy enough to understand when you can sp spin your head around replication. So, 
Reclaiming Lives is a BDA. Um, at the end of each round, repair X ability of hull during combat. Now, I don't know if this is just allocated just to PvE or it's for PvP as well. And it matters. Something that's going to have to be tested. But 5%, 10, 15, 20, and 35%. So that's not bad. I do see this being a more particularly useful ability than mining. Obviously, for those avid miners out there, mining is going to be your number one on this one. For those who are active PvE or PvP players, I, and the matters I can see you using below deck. Sourcing for Shren and Hugh, I have not got a clue, but I'm sure we will find out in due course. So, more primes and buffs coming in. So we've got the Prime Export Chip Claim, which is a free daily claim of Xborg Rep and Xborg Faction Credits, Ops 40 Plus. G3, G4, G5 Station Efficiency, Reducing the cost of materials when upgrading the station modules. I really could do with that one, but unfortunately, I'm not prepared to spend $100 on it. No, if you want to donate $100 so I can get it, that's fine. But I'm not going to ask you to do that one. That's your choice. But anyway, so this will be for Ops 29, 39, and 49 plus. Um, one node per grade. Three levels per node. Huh? Hang on, let me just see if I can get my head around this one. So, one node per grade. Um, yeah, I, I still can't get my head around that one. There's a couple of things, couple of things I can think of when it comes to that one. But anyway, Prime Station resources efficiency, reducing the basic materials, non G6 ones when upgrading station modules so another material drop ops 40 plus one node one level i really have not gotten i don't i don't understand how that's working i really don't to me that sounds like you get it and it's only going to do one level that's it i don't know a few things to note um the Xbox Prime Web will be available only week one on the PC. Uh, there will be also a web store event that scores based off unlocking this Prime. Uh, players will only be able to see the web store, uh, able to see the on the web store itself and not the store in the mobile devices. So if you are operating your mobile devices, I always do, you will need to go to the web store to get it. Uh, this is your reminder to sign up to scope the account, blah, 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 blah. So, 26 new missions coming up, um, which include exclusive missions for both NX01 and the Holodeck. So you've got 10 core missions, continuing the storyline, 5 side missions, 5 enterprise missions, and 6 Holodeck missions. Uh, battle Pass and Cosmetics, as usual, got a nice hailing frequency there. What's that? Um, salt or something like that? Salt shaker? I don't know. Um, now, this one actually caught my eye, but I never actually read it. Uh, the team has been actively working to improve wave defense based on your feedback. Lag, lag, lag. Multiple hostiles. <laughs> and there's a few improvements coming this update, such as the ability to kick players. Yes! Distinct visuals for leaders in the defense system um, and several others. So the ability to kick plays out that you don't want in there, which is a fantastic ability because then you don't have to message them and pray and hope they actually read their DMs. So um, check out the section below for the full list of improvements and other updates coming out of this update. So... We'll have to go through the bug fixes. So, the defense button is showing greyed out when texts are appearing in the wave defense level. Yeah, okay. System status fails to update when user tries to join the same wave defense system again. Um, ships stuck in hazard system continuous error messages. Oh, I bet the G6 plays absolutely love that one. Also, ability sh uh, short description updated to max functionality. 
Uh, mission updates, um, so we won't bother with them. Issue with the ball cube, the cutting beam ability description updated to max functionality. How about getting rid of that tax and making the cutting beam, you know, like stronger so it actually works against players better? Yeah. Um, buff text color update, okay. Uh, issue with section 31, loading screen with the planet becomes pixelated when pressing section 31 star. Button inside the facade, okay. Uh, chest reveal, different token at is appearing for the Q unlock token in the chest reveal, okay. Um, call to action buttons are not aligned properly in the section 31 and Borg fraction stores beneath the store vendor. I'm looking for these wave defense updates. So, explosion visual effects. Oh, okay. Uh, ship improved. There, there, there. So, well, well, I'll leave you to go through them all. So, here we go. Here's the bit that we're looking for. So, made an improvement to Forbidden Tech, color tech update for Forbidden Tech, UI for better readability. Wave defense, ability to kick players, new icon and timer above central entity. That makes a lot of sense because then all players can actually see it on screen rather than looking at the top of the screen for a poxy little box. Um, buff color display as red. Uh, fixed an issue where warning messages are not spawning. Leader is visually distinct in wave defense, which means your leader is now going to stand out. So, makes a bit of logical sense because then you know who's actually running it. Because um, when it when it actually clicks over, it just says defend in that box at the top. It doesn't remind you who's actually the leader. So, so that's the patch notes for there. So, now we need to go back up to Enterprise to click on for the patch notes for the Enterprise. And... Here we go. Written by Rebecca again. So thank you very much, Rebecca, for these notes. So now we have a picture of the NX01. So now for those of you who remember where this statement's from, this is from NX01 Broken Bow Part 1, Season 1, Episode 1. And this was read out obviously, as you can see, the bomb by Stefan Cochran. On this site, a powerful engine will be built. An engine that will someday help us to travel a hundred times faster than we can today. Imagine it. Thousands of inhabited planets at our fingertips. And we will be able to explore those strange new worlds. And seek out new life and new civilization. civilizations. This engine will let us go boldly where no man has gone before. Now, sorry I screwed it up. And I'm not very I'm not a good actor. So I, I can't do James Cromwell's um, voice, especially with a bad chest myself. So, but anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that little rendition. I hope I did it some sort of justice, probably not. But anyway, now for the first time, commanders can experience the ship that took humanity on its first steps. Now, let's we all know this game does not stick primarily to law. It completely changes law or it throws in something else for its own personal gain. So anybody ent entertaining the notion that Enterprise NX-01 should be a G1 ship, you will get no arguments from me. However, they've made this a G4 ship with what I believe runs into T6, uh, G6. This thing is going to be very very powerful when it upgrades. <coughs> so, NX01 saved the galaxy from the threat of the mysterious uh, sphere builders and their pawns of the Zindi once before, and now it's here to do it again. Far from an obsolete museum piece, mm -hmm. the NX01 is equipped with special systems designed to, to counter the Zindi and give you an edge over these formidable adversaries. So, I've heard the modeling game is, is actually quite good, so but we'll have to wait and see. So let's take a close look at this ship. So obviously Ops 40 and above will be able to get it. Brings in with improved efficiency for the Xbox expansion as we already know. 
Unlocking NX01 will unlock unique um, rewards such as new favors, faster past the top tiers of existing favors. So that's a good bonus. And NX01 will also be added to your field training with its own rewards in there. Now, I'm going to guess like the Monovine, the Voyager, it's going to ask you to build it before you can actually proceed through it. So it's worth checking out the field training. See how it goes. See what it looks like. See what you can do without the Enterprise. Because I don't know what the source is going to be. Obviously, we know we've got the first 10 blueprints coming in here in the web store. At event reset. So you will need to be there. Um, around about, I'd say, 1600 UTC is usually when the arc drops. But if not... Throw caution, throw caution out the window. 1700 hours UTC. So when that says 1700, that's event reset. That's here in the UK. That is also in game time. Because the UK, I don't understand why the UK is the UK. I really don't get it. But I'll take it. But game time is done for us. Now I'm guessing that's for Digit that is based in Ireland. Which is obviously right next to the UK. The poor Irish. At the minute, I'm not going to say the poor British. I'm going to say the poor Irish. But that's that's for me to rant about in a live stream. Maybe. NX01 offers a daily source of export credits of all rarities. It's also the only way to source the brand new officer pick hue. And as you tear this ship up, your daily income of pick hue shards grows. So obviously the higher tier you've got in. So basically you're looking at basically like another form of the syndicate sourcing for um, Grush and Mavery. Where you get so many shards per day. Otherwise we get one shard per day. But then every level, every so often there's a block of um, shards. Which technically you could actually unlock him. In fact you could have him maxed out before you've even got the full unlock. Well, actually, no, you will get the full, you will get a unlock, but you'll be able to max them out long before you've actually completed this section of the syndicate. So I'm guessing that's what they're going to have here. So you got that. So we're not going to, obviously, we've already had a look at Hugh, but here we go as well. Launching for the first time, a free-to-play sourcing. Not quite sure how it's going to be done, but there will be the refit launching, um, which will be available in the NX01 refinery. Which will cost credits to unlock. Now, yes, I will want this. So I am definitely going to be going after this. And this is where it tells me that this thing is going to get very, very powerful. Because if you look a little bit further down that text. At Operation 61 Plus and Ship Tier 7. This claim will unlock Sigma resources as well. Now, I know Sigma is a bit of an issue for a lot of G6 players at the minute. But as well, once you get this refit, you will get the resource bundles available to get in the refinery. I believe it's going to be the refinery. So, and then obviously when you go into G6, G6 will unlock. Now where tier 7 is going to fall in the path for NX01, I do not know. Because we're not being told about any locks in it on it yet. But it's a specialty ship. So I'm going to guess there's going to be some sort of a lock somewhere along the line. So it might be a case of like Ops 40, but you can only do like the first three tiers up to Ops 50. I'm guessing. This is just a pure guess. Uh, first three tiers up to Ops 50, and then 4, 5, 6, and 7 going from 50 through 61. So that's just a guess. Then obviously we've got the loop. Like I said, we'll do a, vi a video on the loop. Um... NX01's loop is actually an expansion of the loop that we got last month. It's an expansion addition, whichever way you want to see it. So basically you still need to do the first loop, obviously getting the Zindi scraps. So then bring into this loop to, yeah. So where the benefit is going to be, I really do not know. But here's the new systems that we're going to have. I'm not going to try and name them more because I am struggling with breath. But in order to travel these systems, you will need the Delphic Expanse Travel Token, so another currency, which is sourced exclusively from NX01 Refinery. This will cost the Zindi scraps, which are obtained by defeating the Zindi Reptilian Hostiles. 
So like I said, so you've got to kill out those repti reptilians first, get the scraps, go get this Death Expanse token using those scraps, and then, yeah. So it, this may be... <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. This may be one where you have to sort of like balance between the two on seeing what you can do and where you want to spend those scraps. Might mean, like I said, throw that idea of the five minute loop out the window. Throw it out the window. It might be a case of you will need to go kill way more Zindi Hot Reptilians to make sure you have enough scraps to do your faction pulls for the export faction. Get some credits, do this LXO one loop. Yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be one of those ones It's going to... You're going to have to work it out, but it should be pretty simple to work out, and then you just got to stick to a plan with it. Uh, players who have unlocked the refix can also claim a second travel token each day via the refix claim bundle. So you will be able to get a second Delphi Expanse travel token. Um, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. This is the, the aquatics, as I've already mentioned, there are two variations, the interceptors and the battleships. The interceptors are the low risk because obviously they follow the triangle with the NX-01 being an explorer, which is, always, which is pretty good against interceptors. And a steady target um, for your Delphic Expanse activity. Battleships are much higher risk and high reward. Now we'll see this when we scan them and have a look at them. Obviously you're not going to be able to gain access to them until you've unlocked NX-01 um, and start getting those travel tokens unless they bring the tokens in early. So which means basically the only players getting in there is the ones who buy Enterprise NX-01 on day... Well, actually buy it today. With a set chance of destroying your ship in the beginning of combat. So watch out for that. They've got this big go-home gun as well. Um, so we will we'll look into that as we go. If you survive though and defeat the ship, you will be richly rewarded. These are good targets at the end of your Delphic Expanse run. Big payout for a, sh for a shortcut back to your station. So, oh, oh, sorry, big payout or shortcut back to your station. Loot for these hostiles can be exchanged in the new refinery, obtain export credits, epic credits, and can be exchanged to obtain epic huge shards. So there you go, so there's your catch. Huge shards are going to be locked by behind the epic credits. So, now, obviously, we're going to throw, throw in Jonathan Archer in here, and here is the crew loadouts that they are going to recommend. So I'm going to put myself over here so we can actually get all of them on screen. So what we're going to have then is we're going to have Archer Tucker Janeway, which is obviously going to be your isolating boost and that. You've got Pick Bev, which will um, lean in on critical damage boost. So you've got the critical damage coming from Archer, uh, critical reduction um, with Trip. Beverly increasing your critical damage as well. 5 of 11, as I've also mentioned so far, leaning on loot boosting. So this could replace your um, Picard and Data. Um, in place of Hugh, Khan will quickly improve quick, um, his crit rate. Okay. So I'll still stick with Hugh below Deck in all honesty. But again, that's something we'll, we could actually run. And Hull Breach. So getting that more damage from your crit. So there crew ideas that they are suggesting obviously once I've got Archer unlocked I've got all the other officers so I can actually run them in a live stream obviously that's not going to be till earliest next week at the bare minimum that I will be able to run these loadouts and I can do it on screen for you obviously the top one as well with Jamie does actually give the option of the Enterprise e Picard or Data as well so now, here's another one that reveal in deep space. We'll put myself up here. So basically, NX01 is going to have an active ability to reveal deep space systems for a period of time. As long as a player has been to that system. So if you turn that, remember the war video when I said about part of the 4X protocol, which is explore, turning those systems are written in blue, turning them white. If it is white in the deep space under fog of war, you will be able to use this ability for one minute where you can basically look in that system. It will cost you a currency. Yes, another currency to look into those systems, 
So it could be a case of you might want to peek in territory against an enemy. Find out what uh, miners are in there. So this is going to be a good one for those at war. Looking at those my isogen miners. Maybe isogen OPC hunting as well. But again looking as well into the deep space G4, G5 and G6 regions. If you've got them unlocked. To see if there's any hostiles in there. And maybe if you just need a reminder about what ha hazard are in those G6 systems. Just a reminder, oh, I want to go to this system, what's in there? Oh, yeah, I don't like those hazards. So, things like that. Also, OPC hunting as well. Obviously, if it's still written blue, you cannot look in those systems. Also, when it comes to Deep Space Commanders as well, um, like the idea of war, instead of having a ship go into, the say, the G5 systems, Open it up so you can actually start an armada in there. You can now peer into it, start that armada, send your fleet, uh, send your ships. Everyone come with you and you can get in. So this will be a great one as well for looking into those systems. Get your fleet in and also using that armada quick start as well, which I've unlocked myself. I unlocked not long after doing that video, that war video. So I, and to be honest, I've used it it's on the solo armada so far and I do actually like the idea of it. So... It's just a shame that the timer doesn't change. But again, we'll show that off during a live stream as well. So, um, <coughs> or even scout a token system to make sure there's um, a node free. Because that's another big problem as well. These token systems with those big mining nodes with the faster mining rates. You're having to travel to that system to see if there's a node free. Or pray and hope you've got somebody from your alliance in there who can give you a yay or nay on that one. So, at least then you'll be able to save on tokens. It is called, the ability is called Long Road Ahead. Obviously attributing to the um, opening theme tune of Enterprise. So, it's going to cost you a thousand of these new currencies as well. So, um, here's how it works. Open the galaxy map, blah, 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 blah. Select the system. Click the reveal. Uh, player will have to confirm if they want to use these new isolinear arrays which is the currency and then the system can just uh, reveal uh, we're expecting to bring more content to the world of command uh, for this release our team is trying something particularly new players can head to the web store today during launch to find a special promo code for free enterprise blueprints on day one catch you on launch day well launch day is today the game is obviously currently down for um Maintenance at the minute. It should be back online within the next two hours. All being well. So. NX01 is coming to the game. I did say last month. That um, I do predict it's going to come. In the form of a ship. Or or um, a skin. Well to be perfectly frank. We're getting both. In simple terms. We're getting both. We're getting the ship itself. And we're also getting a refit. All free to play. Obviously there is going to be. A spending element behind it as well. So. We'll have to have a look at that one when it actually drops. But until then, live stream is going to be a case of how I'm going to be feeling later on today. Hopefully I can shift just enough of it to stop me um, doing large amounts of coughing, which I usually do in an evening. Because I'm chilled and relaxed. So my body doesn't like it. But anyway, I'd better go pop some more paracetamol. Really get on top of it. But that's it. That's Patch Note 63. That's NX01. That's Enterprise Part 2. Hope you're going to enjoy. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this. Are you actually happy there's another loop? More currencies? I ain't. But we'll have a look. I'm going to reserve judgment until I've actually seen what's what. But until then, I'm Madball Pegasus. This is Pegasus Show. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until then, stay safe, live long and prosper. And I shall catch you on the next one. Goodbye.